Greetings, I'm Al Beatty, and today I'm here to talk to you about dubbing wax and some of the things that I think are important in the proper use of that wax. Not everybody likes it. Kind of a, in the flight tying world, it's kind of a, a love-hate relationship with some people. Maybe after what I show you today, you may have a different opinion. Let's step over to the vise. We'll see what you think after we get done with uh, the next demonstration. We'll start today with a hook in the vise, and I'm just going to put a, a layer of thread on the hook. It, not, we're not tying any specific fly. I'm just laying down a thread base on which we're going to talk about putting wax on the thread then. Let me get rid of that waist end right there. Whoops, stuck to my finger. All right, here's two tubes of our wax. The one on the left I've been using for the last three or four months. The one on the right I tied six flies with this morning. And I mistreated the wax. What do I mean by that? Well, let me set that one down and we're going to show you the one I've been tying with for quite some time. All right. I want you to notice that the wax is barely showing above the top of the tube. That's really very, very important because if it is too far above the tube, the thread will slice it up. I'm going to show you another one here right now. And I often see fly tires with their wax turned up like this. They have the belief, well, I sure want to get a lot of wax on the thread so it'll really stick there and the dubbing wool won't fall off and all of that. Well, here's what it looks, after, looks like after I've tied six flies. You see how chopped up that is? Let's compare that to one that I've been tying with for, well, several weeks. Yeah, there's a few marks in it, but the one on the left only is a sticking above the tube about the width of the thread, about a double the width of the thread. The one right here in my hand now, as I say, tied six flies and you can see it's what, sticking up a quarter of an inch probably, or some, somewhere thereabouts. So let's see what happens when we, when we dub with one. I'm going to start by putting some, well first let me reposition the camera just a little bit. I'm going to move the hook a little bit higher in the frame so that you can see the thread that we've got here and what we're going to be putting wax on. Now I'm just going to and you will see nothing there other than thread possibly a little highlight of wax right down in here because there is just one little amount there. But basically what we've got is a sticky thread waiting for its chance to hold dubbing in place. And I'm just going to take a, a package of our soft touch dubbing. I'm using orange just because it shows up good on screen. And I'm not even going to take it out of the pack. I'm just going to touch it to the thread. It's called touch dubbing. I'll just lay that down and twist in one direction only. You get a pretty good, nice application of that. Let me just go ahead and wrap that on the hook. And then we're going to use the chewed up wax. I call it wax that looks like it's in a plowed field and it gets that way by cranking it up too high. Now let me just put some, some, oh rats, so you, can, you can see we've got a big clump on there. I'm not going to take it off, but you all have seen this before if you use your wax that way. And yeah, you can touch dub with it. And boy, my fingers are going to get sticky on this, but anyway, oh wow. Anyway, you end up with a big glob, glob right out here, which is going to really make a mess on your hook. A big glob of wax on your fly does not do any good. So what did we learn from this short demonstration? Treat your wax right and it will serve you well. Crank it up above the tube 
uh, no more than the width of two thread widths. That's what our kind of a rule of thumb is. Which do you think is going to work better for you? This one? Or this one? You've seen the demonstration. You decide for yourself.